beautiful sound, and it's great to see all of you and to be together. And we reach beyond our work weeks. I invite you to turn to page 213 in your prayer books as we come together in sanctuary. Offer a bit of shalom, a bit of peace together with these words of beyond. times every voice and let us say and let us say Do you know what for Brent means, anyone? What does it mean? And do you know what in Hebrew, Mushugala Devar? Someone who's crazy about a thing that she makes it happen, okay? That's for Brent. And we have a, a member of this congregation who's vo both for Brent and Mishugala Devar, or Mishugatla Devar, to be technical. Um, she went to Ethiopia and single-handedly found a group of hidden Ethiopian Jews that had not been recognized. And she came back and she said she told us about it. And we said, Susie, well, we didn't say you were Mishuka Atla Devar. We just told her she was crazy, actually. That's what she said. That's what we said. And then it turned out that she was right. And Temple Israel, since then, with the help of Rabbi Bennett, has been in the forefront of sort of rediscovering and helping these, these Jews. And uh, on Tuesday, Susie will be leading a delegation with Rabbi Bennett. And I think Brian Frank, I think you're here also, is going to be going, possibly. Um, to make, uh, we're, we are really in the center of Jewish history right now, uh, and thanks to this woman who's a little crazy. And so um, we're going to, she doesn't know this yet, but we're going to give her the honor of lighting the Shabbat candles as they're about to embark on their journey to Ethiopia. As we turn to page 13, and I call Susie Coleman up to the bima.
Light is the foundation of life, yet impossible to touch. Light is flowers growing and fruit trees blossoming, photosynthesis and rainbows shimmering. Light is energy and romance, enlightenment and lightning. Light is red and violet and magenta and blue, lasers and campfires, warmth and illumination, the sunset and dawn. Data Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Kitchianu Bevitzvotav Bitzivanu Lehadlik Ner Shel Shabbat. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, eternal source of the universe, who hallows us with mitzvot and commands us to kindle the light of Shabbat. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kitshanu b'mitzvotav, v'tzivanu I must tell you that in, as we've been learning about Ethiopian culture, which I'll share in a sermon when I return, uh, we've learned that to listen is more important than to speak. And Susie, who is a very shy person, is very angry at Rabbi Yedwa right now because she had to speak in front of the community. That's the most that she or I will speak in the next week or so as we listen to the community. So uh, it is really going to be an amazing opportunity. I look forward to sharing with you the stories. We continue with a prayer on page 30 responsibly. We are young, our experiences few. We are older, veterans of life's teachings. We've endured great adversity. We have been untouched by tragedy. We are married, we are single, we are Jews of many varied traditions. Having traveled many different roads, our separate journeys have led us all to this sacred place in our lives. Continue now with Lechadodi on page 34. Lechadodi, Lechadodi, Lechrat Kala, Lechrat Kala, Bnei Shaba, Bnei Shaba, Lechabla, Lechabla. Lechadodi, Lechadodi, Lechrat Kala, Lechrat Kala, Bnei Shaba, Bnei Shaba, Nekabla, Nekabla, Shamo Bezacho, Bediburecha, Gishmiyad, El Hamayucha, Adonai Echa, Shabbat <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. Oh, 
Dodi, Petra Dodi, Rafkala, Rafkala, Ishaba, Ishaba, Kabla, Kabla, Petra Dodi, Petra Dodi, Petra Kala, Petra Kala, Ishaba, Ishaba, Kabla. Lekrat kala, lekrat kala, b'nei shabbat, b'nei shabbat, nekabla, nekabla, lekad dodi, lekad dodi, lekrat kala, lekrat kala, b'nei shabbat, b'nei shabbat, nekabla, nekabla, lekad dodi, lekad dodi, lekad dodi, lekad dodi. We turn in our prayer books to page 41, to the bottom of the page. May these prayers change me, this community work through my spirit. May the symbols around me shine in my heart. The words of Torah light up my eyes. May these friendships flow through me like a wave. This family move me like a full moon. So I've been gone the last two um, Shabbatot, the last two Friday nights, uh, one with a sisterhood, another time out of town celebrating a family bat mitzvah. And I walked in here and I felt like clicking my heels saying, there's no place like home, there's no place like home, and really there's no place like home. It's really special being in this community, in this congregation. Um, there really is no place like this. And so we continue with, um, with our words of prayer. Page 45. Our kind deeds are used by God as seed for the planting of trees in the Garden of Eden. Thus, each of us, by our deeds, has the power to create our own paradise. Baruch Adonai, Hama'ariv Aravim, 
Blessed are you, O God, who makes the evening fall. And we continue together on page 54. God, in your presence, I am never alone. When I climb the highest mountain, you are sunshine on my face. When the world turns cold, I wrap myself in the warmth of your spirit. When I find myself in the darkest valley, you are the glimmer of light in the shadows. God, in your presence, I am never alone. For I know that you are with us in our greatest joys and deepest sorrows. Hear, O Israel, God is sunshine and warmth and light and love. Hero Israel, God is one. yourself there's nothing to say stop all the chatter that gets in the way and listen listen to our God when the wind and the thunder finally disappear there's still a voice that you will hear if you listen listen to our can come from within your soul. Close your eyes and listen. Shema Ah, 
asher hod seit yetchem meretz mitzrayim liot lachem delohim ani adonai elohechem emet. We continue at the top of page 60. We celebrate our miracles, the water parting, wall tumbling, sun standing still miracles of our ancestors. Who is like you, O God, creator of fulfillment and joy? confused whether this is daylight savings times or daylight standard time so what which one is it this is standard okay so what do you think about daylight standard when it gets dark so early it's really rough except in moments like this when we have our Shabbat candles lit and the glow of the room it just feels good doesn't it feel good I think it does and it feels to me like this prayer that we're at come true that God has spread a shelter of peace over us that we feel the connection between people that the glow of the candles just connects us in a way that we don't feel when the Sun is, is shining bright so at least let's find the little pieces of the, the, the sparkles the light that we can find in this darkness um, and we'll read the last line on page 64 together Baruch atah Adonai haporei sukat shalom aleinu ve'al kol amo Yisrael ve'al Yerushalayim. Blessed are you, Adonai, whose shelter of peace is spread over us, over all your people Israel, and over Jerusalem. <laughs> Vishameru <laughs> Shameru, the Nehis, 
I was sitting with a family as their father and husband was having a fairly serious heart operation. And it so happened that the surgeon came in and, and to tell them how the operation went while I was there, which doesn't happen all that often. It does sometimes. Um, and the surgeon described the operation in sort of gruesome detail. And they said, well, doctor, how did it go? And he said, well, I can tell you this. He'll never eat another French fry again. And I went home and started my diet immediately. <laughs> and I bring that story to you. I'm not kidding. I really did. And I'll bring that story to you because, um, you know, sometimes I worry that we think that Misha Bayrach is magic. I don't see it as magic. I see it as a reminder. On the one hand, it reminds that there are, that there are forces, spiritual forces in this universe that we just don't know everything about and perhaps we can sort of key into them when we're, when we're ill, but it's also a reminder that these vessels that God has given us are holy vessels, and that we have an obligation, too, to bring healing into our lives. And so with both of those reminders, we turn to page 83 for the Song of Healing. Is a life without french fries even worth living? <laughs> I'm 100% with you. So this week I did something I haven't done in a really long time, months maybe. Something I used to do with great gusto, with all the time in the world. Something that I used to take for granted. 
I watched an episode of a new TV show. Uh, Mrs. Fletcher, anybody out there? Have you seen it yet? Yeah. Okay, it's brand new, it's on HBO, highly recommend. So, the show was billed as a comedy, uh, a coming of age, if you will, of a single mother sending her only son off to college. Only, it wasn't, it wasn't so funny. It was really hard to watch. And every year, when we at Temple Israel send our seniors off into the world, we do it with love and pride and celebration and joy, but also, every year, it hurts to watch them go, knowing that I won't be privy to the ins and outs of their daily lives, to see them through their moments of growth and evolution, and to be able to support them through, through whatever it is that they're going through. You know, it's tough to lose them. And in the past, whenever I've seen parents of graduating seniors who are sad, anxious, grieving the loss of their child's childhood, of already dreading the silence of coming home to an emptier house, you know, I tend to crack jokes about how much harder it is for me, losing 25 of them at the same time when they're only losing one or two. But I don't think I'm going to do that anymore. Again, the show didn't really feel like a comedy. It felt like, like really a, a semi-tragedy, this painful glimpse into a moment in our lives when, when we have to let go. It's not a time for jokes and jabs. And I really don't think this is limited to parents of kids going off to college for the first time. It's sending them to their first summer at overnight camp. It's standing under the chuppah with them, watching your child commit their lives to someone else. And I bet that each one of us in this room can think of a moment, a happy moment, something that happens in the right order, the way it should, but that still feels like a knife to the gut knowing that nothing will ever be the same again. In this week's Torah portion, Lech Lecha, Abram, Abraham later, is told to go, to get going, to leave his father's house, to let go of everything he's ever known, his community, his people, his country, and travel through the wilderness to a new land. And shockingly, he just, he just goes. He packs his things, he takes his wife, his nephew, who follow him into the unknown. It must have been terrifying, following the instructions of a God they did not know, heading out on their own with nothing but a promise of greatness. And things are hard for them. They're really hard. In Egypt, where Sarai, her name now changed to Sarah, is swept up by Pharaoh because of her beauty in an ancient, yet strangely relevant, episode of a powerful man taking advantage of a vulnerable woman. There's war. There's family strife. There's Sodom and Gomorrah. There's heartbreak and pain and infertility, doubt, despair, but, spoiler alert, they pulled through, and we are here. The fulfillment of the covenant that Abraham made with God so many generations ago. And we may not be as numerous as grains of sand on a beach or as numerous as the stars in the sky, but our story isn't over yet. But thanks to Mrs. Fletcher, this week I read this parasha through a different lens. I thought about Abraham and Sarah's parents, and about Lot's parents, as their beloved children set out on this exciting, divinely ordained adventure. How they must have mourned this loss, felt deep, gut-wrenching pain as they packed up their things and left. Even though it was for good, even though it was meant to be, even though. And I read an article in the New York Times recently about this complicated nature of letting go for good, celebratory reasons, about feeling almost guilty for mourning the loss of each last first. And the author, Mary Philpot, she's the mother of a high school senior, writes, it's hitting me that I'm standing at the beginning of a string of endings. I'm proud and I'm bereft at once. My children's happiness feels like opening the best present in the world and they're leaving a gradual process that's barely even started, already feels like my limbs are being amputated one by one. But I don't feel comfortable talking about such a mundane breaking apart in a world where real wreckage lies scattered everywhere. And I carry this sadness quietly so as not to take up too much air with it, to leave space for the far more significant sadnesses of others. How do we appropriately mourn the passage of time when it is passing beautifully? 
I feel this. I feel this. I am nostalgic in the present when my little babies curl up so naturally in my lap, knowing that they're only going to want me to pet their hair as they fall asleep for a few more precious years, if that. Lech lecha, we tell them. Go forth into the world, explore it, cherish it, enjoy the ride. It is a wild one. Lech lecha, we tell them. Go. Your path may not be easy. You may doubt yourself, but know that you are blessed and you are loved and you will thrive as did our people in ancient days. Lech lecha, go. But even as we celebrate their independence, their freedom, proud of their ambition and strength, proud of what we have taught them, we grieve. It's complicated. Isn't everything? Shabbat shalom. I can't even remember the journeys I've taken. And thinking about, I thought that sermon was wonderful, by the way. I thought that uh, for all of us, there are those moments when we've had those experiences. So we, we have to also have exciting experiences. You know Morocco is full, but you have another opportunity. So if you'd like to take a journey with us, know that uh, a year from December, there is going to be a family mission. And I actually am going to be wife and I will be taking our extended family on that. 16 of us are going to be part of that. I'm going to be on a totally different bus from the rest of the kids. And it's, that's one of the advantages. Susan, you've got them. I'm going with other families. It's just going to be, uh, this is taped. They're going to, they never watch these services. Don't worry about it. It's okay. I don't, but don't go up and say anything to them. So join that. You'll, Ja Rabbi Bennett is actually going to have a meeting on um, this coming Sunday. I think it's at 12-something. You can check uh, with him uh, about that trip. And it's a family. It's generational. And if you have that opportunity to share that experience with your kids, your grandchildren, uh, please be with us. We're going to have a grandparents' bus. We'll have a, no. <laughs> Slow-moving bus, a fast-moving bus, a bu chaotic bus. It'll be wonderful. That having been said, let us turn to the Aleinu on page 189. Any youngsters here tonight? Here he comes. Let us rise and sing together. <laughs>
please be seated. We turn now in our prayer books to page 199 as we prepare for that moment when we recall those whom we have loved and lost. And on this Shabbat, we recall those who have died but recently during the past 30 days of Shloshim. Roberta Black, Myrna Bradley, Annette Elbling, Audrey Farber, Leonard Farber, Marty Fisher, Marilyn Friedland, Phyllis Glanz, Debbie Glassman, Charlotte Goldstein, Michael Kubik, Betty Keane, Albert Latinsky, David Lazarus, Emmanuel Lyons, Kenneth Meisel, Abbott Mosher, Harold Osher, Elaine Blau Rabin, Shirley Schweiger, Morris Sherman, Martin Sosnick, Rose Sweetwine, Jack Tucker, Dr. Jack Wayne, Richard Wiener, Maggie Zeman, and Saul Galper. We recall too those whose yard sites fall at this time. Ida Allen, Ashi I. Baker, Erwin Cohn, Marilyn Feldman, Suzanne Feldstein, Eva Farber Garlick, Marty Garfinkel, Eva Farber Garlick, Craig Marshall Gasworth, Lynn Goodman, Arlene June Gottlieb, Stanton Harry Hutton, Peter David Hymas, Jane Kelman, Ruthie Levine, Harry Levitt, Kaylee Loss, Max Markson, William Mazur, Joni Rappaport, Hyman Rocklin, Anita Rosenberg, Leonard Rosenberg, Rita Spickler Rubin, Edith Steinberg, Molly Stern, Alexander Weiss, Sarah Weiss, Judith Joy Weitz, Samuel Schwartz, Dora Gaylor, Michael Phillips, Norman Blatt, Mitchell Schechter, Lester Friedman, Ryan Scott Rossman, Mildred Novin, Norman Golden, Abraham Bressoff, Dora Walkon, David Solomon, Harry Cooper, Zola Burke Snyder, Dina Sal, High Blinder, Joseph Wayne, Blake Mann, and Charlotte Engelson. May their souls of be bound up in the bond of eternal life as on page 199 we rise to remember them. Yitkadal v'yitkadash shmei raba v'yalma divra chirute v'yam lich malchute v'chayi chon v'yome chon v'chayi t'chol beit Yisrael v'agola v'izman kari v'yimru ame yehe shmei raba m'varach le'olam olamei olmaya yitbarach v'yishtabach v'yitbar v'yitromam v'yitnase v'yita dar v'yita lev v'yita lal shmei d'kudusha v'richu Leila min kol berchata v'shirata, tush berchata v'nechamata, damiram v'alma v'yimru amen, yehe shlama raba min shemaya, v'chayim aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'yimru amen, v'oseh shalom v'ramav, v'yaseh shalom, aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'yimru amen. May the source of peace send peace to all who mourn, and comfort to all who are bereaved among us, and let us say, Amen.
Shabbat Shalom. Yeah, so bad, buddy. Such a 